Good afternoon. It's about 1.30. Back to our river tutorial right where I left off. Again, um, this visibility graphics and um, creating floor plans and elevations and all that good stuff. Um, just to finish up on a little bit of the visibility graphics, um, we're going to get into this later on in the text, but we really should address it now because it's pretty complicated. So I just want to give you a quick look at the Revit Element Visibility Override Hierarchy Pyramid. And you'll see that these, these levels of um, overrides have priorities, and they run from 1 to 10. So obviously 1, 1 1.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5.1, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, what that means is, is that if you control uh, object's visibility um, utilizing the lowest display representation control that you choose, um, You'll be overridden by anything applied higher. So it's saying that um, object styles would be the lowest priority. So changing a line type that you're going to reuse over and over again, um, you could do it by style, by object style. And again, I'll show you that. Now, if I was to then just go into um, view, um, where is it here? Uh, object styles, a manage, the manage tab. So it specifies line weights, colors, and patterns and materials for model objects, annotation objects, and imported objects. To override these project-wide settings for a particular view, use the visibility graphics tool. So basically what it's saying is that if I drew something, anything in the model, um, a line for that matter, you, you won't see because it's not in a drafting view, its elevation is too low, but let's let's utilize a different example then, shall we? Let's just go to I don't know. I'll just put a wall in here, over here. Now, if I was to go to manage object styles, you'll see that I can override it here in objects. The object styles dialog box would go up, and then if I went down to to walls, you would see that the wall is broken up into a few. Um, layers and all of them can be controlled and their visibility can, can be controlled by its style, its object style. And that's what I just said. You could do that with project o object styles. But that might not be something that you might you, you want to do. You might want to maybe go up to the next uh, level of the hierarchy and say, well, you know what, we're going to control this element or set of elements or group or you can control anything via these particular visibility overrides. We're going to do that utilizing the visibility graphic overrides, projection cut lines. And again, then you would go to the view, grab visibility graphics, like I showed you. You'd go up to the view, visibility graphics overrides, and you'll see visibility graphic overrides and reflected ceiling plan, because I'm in a reflected ceiling plan. So now let's go back to the, uh, the pyramid. Let's take a look. So now the next... Number eight would be visibility graphic overrides, override host layers, cut line styles, VV or VG. Now what that's saying is if you follow the arrow, it's saying that if you go back to visibility graphics overrides, excuse me, I have a scratch. All right, so if I go back to visibility graphics overrides, and then you take a look at down here, override host layers, cut line styles. Once you hit that, once you uh, activate that radio button, actually that's not called a radio button, it's called something else. It's another type of pick box. <laughs> edit. Now, look, I can now edit the um, represent, uh, vis visibility representation um, by the host layer line styles. As you can see, the host layer has some, some styles, uh, line styles that it is using. You can override those, or you, you don't, and that's going to be based on what your, uh, your managers tell you. Or you tell them, you know, maybe you could tell them, ta-ta, toodaloo. You could tell them that. You could tell them to leave. <laughs> tell your manager to leave. That's, your be that's probably your best thing. Tell your manager that you don't want them around. And maybe then they'll understand the visibility graphic overrides. All right, so I'm not going to, you know, I'm an axe to grind. Listen, everyone needs, the, the only thing worse than authority is the absence of it. You need to know that. Everyone 
needs to be handled. Everyone needs a handler. All right, so let's continue on. Let's continue on with that because it's important. And, and you need to study this on your own, and you need to practice and compare and contrast and, and experiment with the software. If you don't experiment with the software, you're not going to learn it. You're not going to learn it. And don't expect someone to sit over you, hover over your desk, and show you. I, mean, I sit in these classes as an instructor, and what I don't want to do is spend all of my time leaving my desk to go down into a group of 30 people and hover around every one of their desks because they don't know how to navigate through a project directory tree. And it, it, they don't know how to flip through the yellow pages. If your intent is to be nursed and be carried from cradle to grave, this course isn't for you. So I'm not trying to be um, abrasive. It's, it's just, that's just how it is. So don't expect me to sit there, hover over your desktop, and show you how to do it, because I've had an experience where these engineers demand that, that the BIM operators do it, and the engineers that are coming in from all walks of life, licensed electrical engineers, they should know how to do this, for Christ's sakes. They're, enge they're electrical engineers, for Christ's sakes. Isn't, isn't that the cat? Isn't that the pot calling the kettle black? <laughs> if you're an electrical engineer, well, there you go. But see, that's, that's the thing. It, these, these, these engineers, they like to delineate their responsibilities. Oh, no, 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 no. I know how to do voltage drop. <laughs> Fuck you, man. Voltage drop. Go sit in, fucking in front of the computer. And we'll see. We'll see how you attenuate over time. <laughs> and don't get me started. I had, a, I had a pretty bad experience at the joint board. I had some Egyptian dude. <laughs> you gotta see uh, this character, this Egyptian guy, was demanding that I come to his workstation and show him exactly how to do it. You do what he kept telling me. Hmm. Egyptian dude. Hmm. Interesting. Listen, I ain't got an axe to grind. But if I'm, if I'm going to offer you something, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. All right. Now, now that I've vented that, these display representations and this display hierarchy is important. You need to understand that, again, you know, the next phase of this is phasing. Demo. Existing. New construction. You can control the visibility graphics via phasing. And that is important. All right. What am I ripping out of the fucking building? I can't tell what I'm ripping something out, putting in something new. I know what's existing because I'm sitting here looking at it. But you need to delineate what's getting ripped out and what's staying. So this is where the phasing comes in because you can now phase things as demo, existing, and, you know, new. So again, these display overrides, obviously you could see a benefit to that. And that's why it's designed this way. So don't tell me as an electrical engineer or a project manager that this doesn't you know, hold water because this is what you're supposed to be doing. Don't dance around my desk as if you have something to do, because <laughs> you don't. All you do is you walk around a piece of paper. So stop. You're in the rear with the gear. Don't give me any of your horse shit. You're not qualified for any of this. All right, so in any event, view filters are the next level where you 5.1. You can filter so you can view something. You could change the display representation of an element by a filter. And I, I demonstrated that with conduit. Um, but that, that's, I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't recommend it. But again, if you went to um, the view control bar and you went up to here and you went to view, you could see that there are filters. You can create new filters and define rules for those filters. You can apply those filters to categories. You can then select just the category that you want to filter. Let's go to electrical. Let's go to conduits. Now, if you see the filter rules, anyone who knows anything about um, functions, functions, how computers perform functions, you'll notice that there are if, and, or but statements. <laughs> there are if, and, or but statements. So, again, this is where you would, uh, you would insist that it displays itself this way based on a filter criteria. 
So, and all these rules must be true, or any of these rules must be true. All these ru rules must be true. And this rule um, will apply to, hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me a second. I did this a few, uh, while, a while ago. This actually applies to conduits and conduit fittings, not floors and not ramps. Clear all. Check none. Back to electrical. Follow me along here. Go to conduit. You got to do one for conduit fittings as well. Outside diameter, top elevation. Let's add that one. All right, so now you can still fit it up at the top of the elevation. You say, you know what? Anything that's above 10,000 feet in the air, you can't fucking see. That's one filter. Uh, there's lots of filters. Lots of filters. We're not going to get into that yet. <laughs> so, I mean, I may need to relax soon. I still have, I'm so angered by those douchebags over in the city that I've met over the course of my, I can name names. So my shit list is so long, you have no idea. But I'm a forgiving guy. That's one thing about me. I, I'm a forgiving guy. If you have any idea, if you have any, you have no clue <laughs> what I've been through over in that melting pot tempest over the last 20 years. <laughs> I have met, you name it, I've met many people. I have some experience in this. All right, so again, the, fil the view filter hierarchy sequence is complicated. Um, the view, um, and, and let's, let's discuss that. Um, because well, I skipped over view depth, beyond line style. And we discussed that, do you recall? We discussed that, and we'll discuss it again. Go to manage, additional settings, go to line styles, Save the project, you'll see, indeed, the line styles are here. And you can see the RGB color spectrum wheel. These colors have numerical values. All right, so this is where you would uh, apply um, that override. So now back, 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 back. So there's our, um, our view depth beyond line style uh, location that you can look. View filters hierarchy sequence, again, there's five, there's view filters, and the sequence basically is going to be based on the ground plane. So you're going to have to make some decisions, and there's going to be a hierarchy. So as you filter them, you'll see it starts from the bottom to the top. You know, this is, a, this is an easel and a piece of canvas, and the, the colors are bleeding through. I'm not going to get into silhouettes. I just did some reading from a, a colleague of mine that we concurred with online, and he's pretty uh, fluent in silhouettes and line thicknesses. It's for another class. I wouldn't want to burden you with that. Because this is enough. This is enough for you. You are going to go nuts do, trying to do this. It can be very, very complicated. So, all right, so we have the view filters. You override graphics by element. You can do that by just right mouse clicking something. Let's say if we go to this conduit and I right mouse click on it, I can override graphics in view by element. I can say that, you know, this elemental reconduit, this conduit is always going to be, when it's in the foreground, it's going to have this pattern. Or it's going to have this color. If it's in the foreground, it's going to have this pattern. And as you can see, there's a lot of patterns. And the, the color is going to be this pattern, this color. So, <laughs> Pattern, how it comes at you, is important. Is it NTSC? Is it PAL? Is it not, does it not want to be friends? Do you want to be my neighbor? All right, so, and then, again, projection lines, surface patterns, surface transparency, cut lines, cut patterns. All of these play into it. So when you're overriding graphics, you have to keep in mind all of these, uh, all of this applies. If you're going to indeed use surface patterns or like hatch patterns to a certain extent. So that's important. All right, so let's just keep going before we get lost in the, in, the, in the mix. So let's go back, 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 back. Override graphics by element. We discussed that. Graphic display options, silhouette edges. Graphics display options, silhouette edges. So I'm just going to touch on it. Let's go to view. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Where was that box again? It's over by silhouette edges. Hold on. Give me a second. I just read this. Hopefully I absorbed it enough. Where was that particular toolbar? Um, blah, blah, blah. where is it? Oh, it was right in, it was right in the same override graphics, I believe. Just give me a second to, uh, get my bearings. I believe it is still here. And when you go to, let's go to conduit for a second. 
conduit. Now let's go to. Uh, um, have, see, I told you, I'll, I'll, I will uh, experience, uh, I will experience, I will experience, experience resistance as well, a Freudian slip, if you will. Um, so where the heck was that again? It was, uh, blah, 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 where the heck was it? I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to make a note. I'm going to make a note to silhouette edges, and I'm going to come back to that. Because the concept is based on scale. Instead of going through it, I really shouldn't say anything about it, to be perfectly honest with you. But there's a concept behind it. And, and AutoCAD reminds you of it all the time. A link to annotation scale. And it pops up all the time. If you link something to its annotation scale, it may display differently based on its distance from the screen. And that's the whole idea behind the silhouette. So, again, there's a dialogue box about that. There's a dialogue box about it. But I don't want to spend too, too much time digging to the, uh, the graphical user interface looking for it because silhouettes are a very important thing to talk about. And it is in Chapter 19. It's talked about in Chapter 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22, and 23 and 24. It's discussed in those chapters. So, yeah, I, I'm not able to find the silhouette edges right this second, but I'm not going to spend much time on it. So let's just go, let's just go further. You can Google it. All right, so the silhouette, edge, uh, silhouette edges, uh, display options, um, we can discuss that at a later time. Over, override graphics in view by element halftone. We can discuss that real quick. And again, override graphics by halftone. You just click that and it'll gray out. All right, so let's take a look over here again. We can override graphics by paint. Uh, you can easily just go to uh, something and paint it. And if you go to the, I think it's the modify tab. Uh, yeah, the paint tool looks like a TV. It looks like a television. That's split face. Right below it is paint. Split face is the one that looks like a TV. Divides the face of an element such as wall or floor into regions for the application of different materials. Very important for soldier courses and aesthetics on walls. You can make the wall anything you want. You can, um, I know we're jumping ahead, but if you wanted to recess it at a certain area, if you wanted to maybe um, bring it out a little bit, um, maybe that wall consists of multiple... Um, multiple exterior finishes that you want to create creatively. Well, that's where you'd split the wall into different faces. So you can do things with the wall um, in sections. And there's no limit to it. The only limit to it is your creativity. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about paint. So paint is a, t is a tool. Anyone knows anything about construction knows what paint is. Um, there's lead-based paint, like acrylic paint. Eggshell white, all that. Does eggshell white? Anyway, applies the material to the face of an element. For quantity reporting and scheduling, materials that are applied with the paint tool are distinguishable from those that are used as the body material of host object elements. To remove paint from an element, use the remove paint tool. It's like a wire brush. And so then if I just paint this element, if it lets me, you'll notice that the material browser opens up. The material browser. Now this is all the materials, and, and again, this doesn't come free. You can go out with your camera down the millions and take a picture of something, and that's gonna be your material. It's paper thin, paper thin alibi. Is it really a paper thin alibi? There's absolutely no reason why you can't upload a TIFF, a PING, uh, a JPEG, a MPG, uh, not an MPG, a BMP, a, a GIF, not a GIF. You know what I mean, man. You know what I mean. You can go to Home Depot, Lowe's, and get a, get a swatch. Get a swatch. And this is where this all comes out. I can, you know, you can paint anything you want. If you want the, the concrete to be masonry stone, masonry stone, it's not saying you can't. You know, now it's masonry stone. All right, so now, again, that, uh, that's another way of doing it. So, and then line work itself. So, then the line work itself is the highest priority. So then, if indeed you're on the load side, there's that. And if you're on the line side, then there's always that. So then you could change it via you know, the line work tool. It all depends on which side of the line load you're on. So, uh, this video is getting long. Let's take a look. We're, uh, we're moving right along. We're at 19 minutes. 
We're at 19 minutes at 55 frames per second. I could change that too. I could change, I could change that. I could change to 50 hertz if I want. 60 hertz, even worse. In any event. So we, took, we talked about all this. We talked about this. So that's what we got. That's where we're at. And we're going to move right along because now we're going to talk about creating elevations. Elevations are awesome. We're going to talk about elevations. We're going to talk about sections, callouts, drafting views, legends, schedules, sheets using 3D views. And then the camera. The camera. Uh, managing the project model and the bottom line. That's going to conclude us out of Chapter 2 and get us to Chapter 3, which is the basics of a toolbox. And anyone who knows anything about construction engineering knows the basics of the toolbox. Anyone who's worth their salt should know that um, just as an accomplished musician will practice her scales, here you will be practicing uh, the fundamental selection and editing tools throughout the Revit architectural program, and you're going to keep all this stuff uh, in your toolbox. So we're going to get to that, but that's down the road if you're in indeed following along um, wherever it is that you're hanging out. So uh, creating elevations. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I should, I should stop. I'd like to read this passage because this is important. Perhaps you only need to apply a different view range setting. Go back a little bit. Remember we talked about view range, having to look into the 2D plan, but look at it, into, look at it in depth into, so that you can not go cuckoo with 40 different views and be cockeyed and have like some sort of bipolar um, incident or episode. Because this is a pilot episode. Now, in any event, perhaps you only need to apply a different view range setting to isolated areas of a view. This can be accomplished with the use of the Plan Region tool. You can find this tool in the Create panel of the View tab along with the other Plan View tools. The Plan Region tool allows you to sketch a boundary within which the View Range dialog box will be available to make specific changes. You can use this method for areas such as windows that might be placed in a wall above the cut plane, but need to be shown on a plan for documentation. Another useful property of plans is known as an underlay. <laughs> I'm going to say it nice. I'm not going to say it mean. I'm going to say it nice. I'm going to offer a suggestion to Dow Architectural Group. A su just a suggestion. I'm not going to be mean about it. Another useful property of plans is known as an underlay. Some folks use the, the, the yellow paper. They use that yellow paper, sepia, translucencies, transparencies to do this. So I'm going to be as kind as I can with this tip for you. I doubt they're following along. They're very busy. Another useful property of plants is known as an underlay. Although this property may function more like a tool, it is found in the properties palette along with the other view properties. An underlay allows you to use any other level as a reference in the current view. You can use the underlay to display ceiling soffits in a floor plan to display furniture layouts in a ceiling plan or to use another level as a reference for replicating partition layouts. And we're going to get to it because I'm going to do it right now. Now what that's saying is that you can independently give yourself a view range. So here's level one. Here's level one. And what I did was I actually drew in a plan region. I drew in a plan region. I drew in a conduit. I drew in a conduit and I didn't apply a filter to the conduit. I set it so that it's beyond line is set to RGB um, green, <laughs> the RGB green that I like. Because what's, what's happening is it, I put it at three inches below grade. I put it within the deck. Its center is, its middle elevation is negative three inches. So it's in the slab. And you can see it's a three-quarter inch diameter. Anyway, it's coming out from um, somewhere. It's here, somewhere, um, on the ground. And it's coming into the mechanical room. I just, I just stubbed it right here. I didn't really up it. I just stubbed it. I mean, I could up it, but I didn't load all the proper conduits. I didn't load the proper conduits. This temple doesn't have the proper conduits loaded. Uh, it just doesn't. And I'm not loading them right now. Because I told you, this is not an MEP instructional course. This is an architectural. But I always run back home to MEP because I like MEP. I happen to like architecture and MEP at the same time. I mean, I like civil, too. And structural... I like all of them, but again, I, I'm kind of torn between two lovers. As are you. War, peace, right? War and peace. All right, so, um, and that's what I did here, just like that. So let me show you what I did. I'll show you how I did it. So I'm just going to delete. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to delete this. And I'm not going to draw the conduit again because I already did it. If you want to, you want to take the, H, uh, you want to take the MEP class, 
pay for it. I don't know. Talk to my eight, my business agent. They're in Queens, I think. Or Cubby from Local 54, Madison, New Jersey. Go talk to my agent, Cubby. International Laborers Union. Or go talk to my agent in the city. Because I'm tired of this. I'm broke. Get with the fucking program. Someone's got to rattle his cage or her cage too because I'm sick of my handlers. They're not doing it fast enough. Go, someone go talk to my publicist. All right, so now, now, if we go to view and we go to plan views, floor plan, reflected ceiling plan, structural plan, plan region, creates a plan region with a view, within a view. Sketch a closed region within a plan and specify a different view range. Display inserts above and below the cut plane, or below the cut plane. Multiple front plan regions in a view cannot overlap one another, but they can have coincident edges. That's important. All right, so, and there's a lot of stuff here. Let's just use the plan region tool. Now, we could draw it with a line, sketch some lines. Let's use maybe, we could pick lines that are already existing. We could use a, a circumscribed polygon, or an inscribed polygon, or a rectangle. I mean, I could use the polygon, I guess. I could say it's eight sides. We could pretend we're... Playing with Bruce Lee or something. Eight sides, no offset. I'll give you the center here. I'll draw it out like something like, like this. I'll draw it to encompass these doors. And I'll just finish it. Now, what that's saying is that I, I created a, a, a plan region here that I could control the view depth independently of the plan that it's on. Now, what it didn't do, it didn't create another floor plan. It didn't create another floor plan here. If you look. It didn't create another floor plan, okay? It didn't create another floor plan. You have to understand that. Because if I would have created a call out, it would have. How you create these are going to dictate where they go in the project browser. The project browser is going to, what Revit wants, it, it, whatever Revit wants, Revit's going to get. So uh, we've got to be cognizant of that. All right, so what we have here is this plan region. Now you notice as I uh, touch or I select, the plan region uh, within the context of selecting it, a contextual toolbar opened up um, and you'll notice that there aren't any options but you do have now uh, a mode in a region where you can edit the boundary or edit the view range. Now let's do that and sure enough like I said and I'm, listen, I'm, not, I'm not patting myself on the back by any stretch of the means because I just struggled for a half hour trying to figure something else out and there's other people out there that could have done it very much faster and they probably have the other end of this line going he can't do that. So I have to remain humble. Uh, I have to remain humble. I cannot begrudge an education because there are architects that spend a lot of money on their education. And the last thing they need is some blue-collar guy coming in telling them they don't know what the fuck they're doing because they do. They do. So I have to mind my manners. In any event, there's a, little, there's a level of frustration uh, when you're working in the blue-collar world. There's a level of frustration because when it comes to blue-collar, a lot of them are just as ignorant as their fathers were and their mothers. That's why they're still in the blue collar. In any event, I'm not going to begrudge that. I'm not going to begrudge it. But some guys just don't like other guys to dress nice. That's how it is. I, I, I suspect girls act that way too. Envy and jealousy play into this. Emotions play into this. Everyone wants to... The, 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 the higher the bird flies, the more rocks they're going to gather. It, it makes... Misery loves company and it'll make people happy if they can show just how stupid you are because then then they're smarter than you right i'm sure everyone's experienced that in their career if i could just prove to everybody else this guy isn't as smart as he thinks he is then i'll be the smartest guy in the room you're gonna have to deal with that they come at you like that all the time and it's always based on insecurity so what you have to do is you got to let them have that you let them you afford them that luxury you have to afford them that luxury, and, and they'll get everything they're asking for. All right, so as you can see, this view range is now independent of the floor plan. So the floor plan itself has a view range, and so does the, the plan region. And I'm going to easily demonstrate that by changing the cut plane, number two, the primary range cut plane. I'm going to change it just below the top cut plane. I'm going to put it at seven foot five. I'm going to put the cut plane here, I'm going to raise this to an inch below this. And I want you to watch what happens within the circumference of this faceted circle. <laughs> it's a circle. It's really not a polygon. It's just a circle. 
is rough edges on it. <laughs> There's eight rough edges that have facets on it, just like anything else. I told you, I'm Jewish, I think. I think we hid from the Nazis by lying that we were Polish. All right, so it's true. It, 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 it's, it's, it's carbon. Come on, think about it. It's carbon. What's on the, think about what's on the inside of this monitor. Think about what's on the inside of your TV tube. What's, what's actually floating around the screen, if you think about it, right? Think about it in those aspects, and then you start to understand telecommunications, television broadcasting, you know, things like that. And, and this is for another course. But it's all, it's all related. It's all related to a certain extent. We're engineering commercial. We're commercially engineering commerce, commercials. It doesn't necessarily mean the guy that's standing at a TV screen telling you to buy Chantix. What it means is that we're generating commerce. It's commercial. It's, it's a part of speech. <laughs> commerce is a part of speech. So I didn't do what I said I was going to do. Let's do that. Let's change this to seven foot five. Seven foot five. Tib. Now, I haven't applied it yet, but I want you to watch this view. And I want you to notice these doors here as opposed to this door and this door and these things all in this area. You have to look back between the two. I'll, I'll undo and redo so you can see it. I think I did it right. Apply. Okay. Okay, I think I did it right. It was a flick of an eye, but I missed it. But I think I saw it. Yeah, I saw it. Okay, it did happen. If you see the doors, you see how that one, you see it? You see how it's no longer being displayed? Because the cut plane within the octagon is raised an inch below seven foot six. It's at seven foot five. It's right below the, uh, the top cut plane. So it's above the door. <laughs> it's above the door. And again, that's something that you'll get. You know, this isn't insurmountable. You got to remember, I started as a laborer with a jackhammer, you know, and I, I was making $18 an hour. I only was able to achieve this level of understanding of this platform because I busted my ass. And I had help along the way. I had help along the way. But it ain't easy. Not everyone wants to help you because then, you know, they help you. They feel like they're putting you out of, you know, they're, they're giving you so much, you're going to the, put them out of work. I had so many guys, three, four, five, six, come at me at once like this. I had engineering teams come at me to put me out of work. Teams, three at a time, come at me and put me down the road based on false on false facts, on false uh, information, or, and, and misguided information. And I don't begrudge them for it. Listen, I, I, listen. anyone that's aggressively pursuing a career, I'll give you the luxury of, of acting that way, if that's your forte. But in actuality, in practice, in practice, you have to understand what you're professing to understand. And if you really don't understand what you're talking about, you really should be, shouldn't be dictating policy, is all I'm saying. Because the ramifications of it are, 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 are far-reaching. I hope. <laughs> I hope they are. So, anyway, um, yeah, we, I wanted to discuss that, and, and I wanted to read again, because we're going get, to get into elevations, creating elevations. And we're at, we are at, we're at 33 minutes, so I'm going to stop there.